Sophie, every time I come here as a lucky guest, I am, as soon as I step inside here, I am transported. This has got to be one of my favorite all-time entries anywhere because it's so moody and romantic yeah. and glamorous. And I know how much you guys love to collect at auctions. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's old pieces, but then there's modern art. Yeah. How, was that the kind of overall vibe when you set out to do this? You, you did all this yourself, by yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. Well, the intention was, we live in townhouses and, and there's all this classical sort of traditional, you know, accoutrement that comes with a townhouse. And at some point I said, you know, it would be nice to have some contrast. Um, and when I met Jeff, my husband who loves collecting art, everything was like dog paintings and, you know, scenery and landscapes. And I said, when you put that in a townhouse, it starts to make it all feel a bit old. I said, what if we got into modern art? And that was started the quest, and that's how we built our collection from there. It's like walking in to an exclamation point in the best <laughs> way, because I always yeah. think of art as kind of like punctuation in a room, mm -hmm. and it's like, boom. But it doesn't distract, it welcomes you, and there's all these surprises. Everywhere that you look, between the art and the way you've arranged it on the walls, um, all the personal objects that have been collected, every little moment, there's, there's literally not a, an inch that has been forgotten in the best way. Oh, well, thank you. Um, it's true. We both like to collect and um, find things that work together. So this painting was the lead piece for this room. So it informed actually the color of the piano. You would have thought that would have been black and I, it took me forever to find a, a baby grand in this color that worked back to the painting. So it actually, it does help to have something that leads you to coming up with your scheme for the room and that everything works back to that. Even though you and Jeff are really close friends and I know this about you already, yeah. even if I didn't know you, when I explored all these floors for the first yeah, time. you haven't been here for ever, yeah. Exactly, I felt immediately like this is a couple that is united in their way of wanting to collect and live with what they love. Sometimes you feel like this is a one-sided thing where yeah. someone got right. to do it and the That's other true. partner was yeah. like, just you do your thing. Right. For you both, Jeff loves the hunt a yes. lot. Oh my gosh, yeah. Almost to a funny fault well, sometimes. Yeah, no, He's so true. passionate about it yeah. and you encourage it and you find a way to put, I mean, it's very much of a joint venture. Uh, but I definitely have to assert myself because he is so wonderful about um, his passions for collecting. And you really do need art. I mean, art is essential to make a room um, exciting in my opinion. But also the more you collect, you can edit the other stuff away and really hone your collection. So in this room, I knew I wanted to have a, 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 a mural of some kind, and I thought about having it hand-painted, and I spent about six months uh, going to all of these different places that do hand-painted walls. During that time, my, my vision changed, and I thought, gosh, now I really know what I want. I really want trees, and I want clouds in here, and have it be very transported. And so I ended up at Fromental, and they brought this um, beautiful sketch of something they were developing called Bucolic. And so we mapped out the dining room, we threw in tons of more clouds, and I got home one day, and there was a box on the stairs. And we opened it up, and of course this whole room was in the box. Come on in, let's have a cup of tea. 
I feel like I am in a kitchen in the countryside of England. Oh, well, that's a huge compliment because I was kind of going for that. Um, you know, the house is very New York City, and I thought, let's make this, let's make this kitchen a throwback. And um, I was actually, oddly enough, thinking of a, a, a huge farm kitchen that I saw in England, yes. um, where everything is on one side and everything is on, there's nothing, and then I thought in order to really get that, I really need to get an old table instead of a proper kitchen island. And this was the one I found, and then I moved it in, and it was about six inches too short to have as the counter, so I just had these guys, I said, listen, what can we do? And they said, oh, this is really easy, we're just gonna add some wood and we're gonna hammer some brass plates around it. But it completely sets the tone in here and sets it apart from a lot of Manhattan kitchens because, as you said, that kind of English country feel of a table that also acts as a counter. And I love how you have just a variety of orchids, plants, all in the middle of it. Just makes it feel, again, less utilitarian. You know it's utilitarian, but oh, it yeah. has <laughs> just a wonderful mm -hmm. at home with feeling. Also, the way the room is divided between super utilitarian, yep. all the all, white all tiles on the wall. All the work is on that side, and all then work. all of the pretty stuff is on, this, on side. this side. Yeah. Wait, where's the refrigerator? So I took that and I moved it into the pantry area. So it's oh, paneled. so it's completely hidden down it's, there. It's in its own special place. And I just wanted this to be, you know, uh, without all of that, you know. Well, yes, it's very seamless and clean here. And then on this side is kind of, you've got your window seat, which is such right. a luxury. Yeah, it's really All nice. the cozy kind of um, at home with feeling here, all the work stuff goes there. Oh, so I love to, in my own home, um, infuse a guest bedroom with personal items, things that are meaningful to me. Just every piece of us is gonna be in a guest room, right? We love travel, we love Middle Eastern textiles. I love texture and color. There's a friend of mine who makes these animals out of vintage wool sweaters. Make it interesting. It's, you know, make it worth the three flights of stairs that you have to that go I had up. to go. And I feel like I could see this room without knowing you. Yeah. and then meet you and put it together and me. after yeah. speaking with you well this is her okay it's well so then deeply you. you've just explained exactly why i love to share that with my clients and say please don't shy away from infusing your guest bedrooms with sentimental and personal things that are meaningful to you it's a good thing to do and a lot yeah. of times people with their guest rooms will just put all the stuff they don't really love it's it <gasps> guest rooms can feel watered down right. like yeah. the receptors of don't love this don't like well, that and you have some of your favorite things we love we love having guests to be honest it's like i said it's about once every week and that's what that's why i created this i wanted people people say like oh yeah i don't want them to get too comfortable we're the opposite no we want you to get comfortable and stay up here and have a good time yeah i want to be your forever guest yeah, good. yes yes you are you already Thank are you. I do um, obsess about getting bathrooms to, to be really fun. I love making them interesting, beautiful, and I like them each to have their own personality. Obviously, I want them to all relate to each other. I think for powder rooms, you're not gonna use that every day. It's for guests to see. I, I tend to go a little more luxe on those if we can. And um, I like to start off with lighting. I think lighting is a beautiful thing. So powder rooms maybe the lighting is really flattering and warm and inviting and then for your personal bathrooms you want to have that dimmable lighting but you want to be able to crank it so you can do your makeup and see everything so with this room i thought why don't i give jeff a room that he can call his own you can just let come here after work let his hair down watch a show and it's a safe space where no one's going to interrupt it's just for him so I designed it specifically with him in mind. Give him the wood walls, give him a, a cozy couch. Super important was the couch to get this right. So I did it in a mohair so that he can just feel like it's a blanket, you know? And he got this sword, which is from the 13th century in Scotland. It was a farmer's sword that if you went out into the fields, just to check on anything, you brought your sword with you. This would be like, I don't know what we would bring with us today. I guess our phone. So for dark rooms, which I embrace, I think it's an opportunity to do something really intimate and um, really uh, kind of inviting. Instead of saying, oh, I've got a dark room, how can I bring more light into it? I love to say, okay, great, it's, it's, let's make it dark. Let's make it darker. Let's give it darker walls. Let's give it really moody, sexy lighting. Let's add a bunch of texture. But people are kind of captivated by, by these dark rooms. They love them. The one thing that I really love about townhouses is that it's vertical living. So 
what that means to me is that each floor has its own um, energy. So if you want to put the kids on one floor, you want to have the main bedroom on one floor. And what I did is I put a guest suite on the top floor. Um, we love to entertain and we have a lot of guests. Sometimes each week there's a new group of uh, friends or family coming to stay. And so the guest suite is completely independent. So there's a room, there's a living room, and it's, it's just one of those things that it makes it easier. Although it was challenging to do, this project pretty much embodies my philosophy. Um, when I take on a new project, I always like to look at the era and the architecture, the location. And then from those pieces, you sort of move with the client forward, making your decisions. And with this place, it was built by a doctor in the late 1800s. And he and his wife and young baby um, crossed the ocean coming back from England on the Titanic. And they lived here for a while. And then it went through a few series of people. But there's all these wonderful stories. There was the lot, these bottom two floors had been rented out. It was a bookshop when we, um, bought it and at a certain other point in the 70s that it had they'd sold furniture that John Lennon bought a console table at so it had gone through so many eras that the job was really to bring consistency back th through to make it a whole place so the people that lived here for 50 years were a big deal in theater back in the day they were both stars of Man of La Mancha she played Aldonza he wrote the book and helped stage it and when we first came here I was, you know, getting to know the building and down in the basement was the original music that he had handwritten and her wigs that were from all the different wigs from the different scenes of the play. And I just felt like, wow, this place has so much history of this, this area, the state, you know, the city, theater, it's infused. Okay, so this is one of the fun things we found downstairs. Um, Halston was a milliner before he was a designer of clothes. And this is one of his original hat boxes with his label going to some Mrs. Van Eck and of East 68th Street. For whatever reason, it was here. And I found it in the basement and then I opened it up. And of course, oh yeah, there's a crazy little 1960s hat uh, that Halston, you know, had sent to this woman. And it was still in the box. So now that has a permanent place in this house, and it's very inspiring. Don't miss another video visit. Click on the orange Q to subscribe and have Quintessence virtually delivered from our doorstep to yours.